Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Can we lift a hallelujah right where you are? Can you just lift a hallelujah for his faithfulness? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As stated, the, the word of the Lord has already been blessed tonight. The protocol has already gone forth. Turn with me to Matthew 27, verse 46. That's Matthew 27, verse 46, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Matthew 27, verse 46, in the King James Version, reads as follows. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I'll read it again. And about the ninth hour... Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Emi, Lama, Sabachthani. That is to say, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We are already seated, and again, the protocol has gone forth. Amen and amen. So, this word can appear difficult. See, in this very poignant verse, we witness Jesus is on the cross. He's experiencing the depths of human suffering. He utters a cry that resounds with an anguish and an abandonment. It's expressing a profound sense of alone, a profound sense of being left to the side, a profound sense of I am forsaken by God. Imagine the weight of these words sitting on you, the intensity of that moment. Jesus, the Son of God, fully divine yet fully man, endures the agony of the separation from the Father. Now, I know in our lives, we too sometimes encounter moments and feelings of despair, of doubt, and of loneliness. We may even feel abandoned as God has turned his back on us. Yet it is in these moments that we are called to forsake our feelings and cling to the next word, to cling to faith. We must remember that even when we cannot feel his presence, we can still remember his promise. So how do you move forward when your feelings threaten to overwhelm you? When you don't have an encouraging point from, Father, you have abandoned me, you have forsaken me. How do we navigate the storms of life with unwavering faith. The answer lies in the next word. Today I'll bring to you forsaking your feelings on to the next word. See, the next word in this incredible phrase or in these phrases is I thirst. Now, I won't go and repeat what I stated last year, though it's still true. To be thirsty is still to be alive. And when you're alive, you still have the opportunity to claim the victory. You still have a promise to carry out. You still have a plan and a purpose for your life. And when you're Jesus, it means that you die on a cross, but you get up three days later. But I'm not going to repeat what I said last year. I promise this ain't that. See, here our Savior in this moment is remembering that if I forsake these feelings... If I, forsake, if I forsake this abandonment, if I let go of these feelings, I can move on and get the victory that I'm looking forward to. If I forsake the feeling of my abandonment, I still know that I am still one with the Father. That even when I'm being separated and I'm not separated from my promise, I'm still yet here. I'm still yet able and I'm still yet ready to transform the fabric of the time. I'm still thirsty and I'm going to move on to the next word. The word after that is, it is finished. And here, our Savior, though beaten, broken, ugly, broke down, left to suffer, having forgiven a sinner, having given up his own mother, having restored a man to paradise in the next phase of his transition, is sitting there and still with a triumphant finality says, I have done my work. It is finished. 
He declares this completion of his redemptive work. His, he, he forsakes his feelings here of his inadequacy as a broken body and a beat down self. He forsakes the embarrassment of being left on the cross without his own mother. He forsakes being left and put down to the side. He lay, leaves it alone and says, I may have to have, I may have happened to forgive those who hurt me. I may have allowed a sinner who didn't deserve it into the gates. I may even have to give up my mother, but it is still finished. I can move on to the next word because my word is still getting done. My work is still being yet made and my promise is still available to me. My work is still yet getting done and I'm on to the next word. See the next word after that, the next word after that is father into thy hands I commend my spirit. Here Jesus fully submits having already won the victory, finishing his job well done and in his final breath Jesus entrusts himself fully to the Father's care, demonstrating the ultimate surrender and faith. He forsakes his feelings of fear. He forsakes his feelings of loneliness and surrenders his life to the one God who can keep him. He forsakes his feelings of hurt and gives it up to the one God who saves him anyway. He forsakes his feeling of abandonment and still says, I submit yourself to my will. He moves on to the next word. See, the next word is about getting thirsty. It's about still going after what God has called you to do, even in a low place. It's about getting out of your feelings and still walking out what God has purposed for you to do. It's about not letting a temporary situation determine your destiny. It's about finishing past and finishing strong and pressing past your pain to go all the way to your promise. It's about getting ready, even when you don't feel like it. It's about getting prepared and finishing and going through because you're clear that this moment is only te temporary. You're clear that there's still time to go. You're clear that there's still a next word. In other words, in order to fast forward, in order to continue in the transition of what it is to go to the next word, you have to depart from your feelings. You have to forsake your feelings. You must let go of what your feelings are. You must literally make a departure from the place you currently are in to where you intend to go. Jesus was transitioning here. From his feelings to his fortitude. From his setback to his settling to his promise. From his pain to his answer being made. It is time to get to the next word. Don't stay stuck in how you feel. Don't stay stuck in your broken place. Don't stay stuck in what people may talk about you about. Don't stay stuck in having to forgive those who don't deserve it. Don't stay stuck in giving things to those who don't even earn it from you. Get to the next word. Remember that as an all-knowing God, you still have a promise. That as he's the still all-knowing God, you still have a promise. That it's time to get to the next word. It's time to forsake your feelings and get to the next word. To God be the glory.